All right. Good evening. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us for the latest episode of our podcast. Ito, may return na tayo dito sa podcast natin. Of course, one of our favorite guests and my former professor, Professor Ranji Dry, who is also a fellow at Okta Research. Thank you very much, Professor, for joining us. Yeah, thank you, Richard, for having me here. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to anyone, to everyone who's watching this uh, particular podcast. Yeah. Thank you a very so much. Popular podcast at, 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 at that. Very popular pod- podcast now. Yeah. Thank good, you job. So much. good job. Uh. <laughs> Thanks to you guys. I mean, I think uh, definitely having a uh, high caliber uh, uh, guest who feel comfortable. Because, you know, what we do in podcasts is not actually just interviews, it's, it's a conversation, right? Uh, oh, yeah, it's, it's like one social scientist to the other and all. And I think that's what people appreciate. Um, Professor Rai, um, so a lot of surveys have come out uh, in recent um, uh, days and all. Obviously, the two authoritative ones. I'm not saying this because we're colleagues and friends, but it's really Pulse Asia and you guys who came out with some very important surveys that are relevant to our discussion today. One is on the Senate race, and I can see a lot of overlaps uh, in a good way, in, in the sense that there is a kind of a corroboration there. Um, between the two uh, in terms of seeing uh, uh, leading candidates, at least the number one, two, three, four, at least. Right? Um, and then seeing potentially with the Magic 12. But more importantly, obviously, the policy show one was interesting. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, if you also guys also have your own version, because uh, the charter change survey was very important, which we had a separate episode on. And hopefully I'll also have Ronnie Holmes of Paul Asia Secure to also discuss their survey. But I think it would be interesting to also discuss in charter change. You know? um, but where I think your your survey agency has done something very interesting, um, which I saw uh, on Twitter a few days ago, I was tagged by some people who who were referring to the survey whereby you're looking at political affiliation uh, for the back, lack of a better term, loyalist versus DDS versus the Lao, pink, whatever, you know, this kind of uh, pedestrian way of putting it. Apparently, yeah. the, the survey was from you guys. So when, when uh, forwarding data from you, I said, no, 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 we have to have a conversation about this, Professor Wright. Yeah. So let's first get the ball rolling because yes, the the um the election proper will be next year. Yes, the technically speaking, Sigurma October Pamuks is starting registration and all. But we all know as early as right now, everyone is talking about next year's elections. It's just the nature of politics in our country. What, so what is the Okta research finding so far as far as um, the Senate race is concerned, of course, the most high-profile race. And then from there, let's talk about the bigger implications of that. Uh, you want to share, uh, Professor, your survey? Yeah, so yeah, that- sure. Okay, uh, I'll just share a screen for everyone watching. Yes, okay. please go ahead, sir. Okay, oh, so, okay. So just for everyone's uh, information, uh, we do a, a regular survey quarterly, and uh, this is our Tugon ng Masa survey, and this is our first survey for the year, 2024, quarter one. So it's, uh, yeah. It's a, it's it's around it's around political preference and preferences of adult Filipinos, and uh, you know it was conducted um, from March 11 to 14, and the gold standard face to face interviews, 1,200 respondents all around the country. Um, that's Balance Luzon, the National Capital Region, uh, Visayas and Mindanao, and of course um, the uh, margin of error is plus minus three percent. Okay. Okay. What are the, what are big findings? No. Okay. So here are the list of uh, possible no uh, winners. No. If if the election for the Senate was held during the period of the survey, uh, which was March 11 uh, to 14. So a note to our um, viewers: uh, these things, these numbers will change. These rankings will change. Okay. And so when you look at it, uh, look at the list. It's no. It's very very similar to the Pulse Asia list. No. Uh, in many respects. So we have Erwin Tulfo uh, at 58%. Uh, we have Tito Soto, uh, of course, at 50%, 51%. Uh, Christopher Go or Bongo, Senator Go at 49%. And the new um, uh, person we added to the list, the disruptor in this list, is, of course, Mr. Ben Tulfo, the brother of another, Erwin Tulfo. Another Tulfo, yeah, yeah. Yeah, another no, but this is important because we we didn't. This is the first time we're including him in the list, and uh, he, he caused a major disruption, no? uh, at forty two percent. So uh, if you do a straight counting, he is in the, the top five, no? Okay, and of course, former president uh, Rodrigo Duterte, thirty eight percent. So I guess this is the top five, 
And uh, yeah, this is this looks similar to uh, the surveys of some of the more prestigious uh, survey companies that have come out. And to round off, uh, we have uh, Benjamin Abalos, Ben Her Abalos. Uh, these are the statistically no? uh, the personalities with a statistical chance of winning the election. Uh, being the top 12, pala, I should say, uh, if uh, the, the elections were held during the survey period. Um, okay, well, the big surprise here, Ben Tulfo. Yeah, Ben Tulfo was a big disruptor. Everybody went down because of him. Just to give you a sense, huh? uh, right. Erwin Tulfo was 76%. He was hovering around 70, 68 to 74% for the last two quarters. His brother comes into the list. He's now down by 18 points, no? which is oh, wow. pretty uh, mm -hmm. regular no? because, he, you know, it happens with the Heristo brothers anyway also. No? So you put two names. It also happens with the Be Nice. Uh, you know, so when you put two names in the list, you know, the, the voters uh, tend to, uh, you know, uh, focus on uh, mm -hmm. split. No? So now he's, uh, what, 58%. He's 18 points down. Okay. Um, I think the big story here is Aimee Marcos. Senator Amy Marcos, she used to be 42%. She's down 13 points. In fact, she's, the I think, one of the biggest, um, uh, you know, the biggest changes. To a slight speed, decline. Yeah, yeah. 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 slight decline. Uh, not slight, but actually a, a significant decline in her numbers. Uh, she's still within the top uh, 12. Uh, uh, her range here is 6 to 12, uh, but uh, her number is was 42%. She was around that area or that range, I should say. 38 to 44 percent for the last three quarters and uh for the first quarter of this year uh she she went down 13 points so this is these i think are the big stories uh for this particular uh survey uh you know the, the survey findings for the quarter one um i think another one if you go down the list richard if you go down no uh, this is uh, seven. You'll be surprised that Pulong Duterte, another new entrant. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, he's here. Baste. Sorry, he's... Baste. Baste. Yeah, yeah. Can you see him from the... Yeah, I'm sorry. It's down. This is kind of uh, surprising to us. No? Baste Duterte. 16.8%. Um, number 13. This is the first time we're um, measuring his numbers. And... He did what pretty well. Surprise! Surprise that he's within the range, or surprise that he's not higher. No, no, surprise that he, he got uh, high marks. And remember, there are three Duterte's in this list. He got yeah. higher, nominally higher than his brother. No, so it also shows the power of that brand, no, Duterte brand. No, they're, they're rating higher than uh, some of the more established political names, some of the other established political names who are really trying to get into the Senate. We are not certain. Baste or Pulong will run, but just it just goes to show that they have a strong, right. very strong, uh, following. You no, know, as far as the Filipino voter is concerned, Bro, when you go down the list, just a second, yeah. sorry. I don't yeah, know yeah. for some reason, but it frozen your screen. Oh, I was wondering. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry, sorry. So let me redo it again. My apologies for that. So yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, it's my, it's my. Maybe it's just the internet or something. Yeah, measure frozen. If you can redo it again. Yeah, is that is that good now? Um. Yeah, yeah, is that I can see the first page, but I wonder about in the connection my wrong pages. Oh uh, yeah, okay. Is that the, is that better? Yeah. Hmm, I wonder what's going on. Bakit yung first page lang pinapakita dito sa side? Okay. Yeah. As first page lang, but can you see Baste? No, as in the, the thing it shows is just the the tugon ng masa first page. Ah, okay, okay. I don't know I wonder why. why. Okay. Like, so... You're using a different uh, baka may iba pa yung pa kayong window na bukas. Uh, wala, wala mm. naman. Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah, usually it doesn't happen, so I was wondering what's going on. I mean, your explanation okay. is still valid, just for the um for the purpose of those who want to see at the exact numbers and all. Mm. So I was just wondering what was going on. It, this okay. is so there, the two people we have to talk about. No, so one is Ben Tulfo, and the other one is Baste. And we have a situation of three Duterte's within the, yeah, in the list, list. there, yeah, and then. You also have a situation of two tulfos within top five. Okay. I'm Can this be seen now? Yeah, I don't know what's going on, but it's just... Ayan, now it's moving now. Yeah, it's dynamic now. Okay, okay now. Yes, perfect. 
There we go. And this right. is what so I'm saying. Erwin Tulfat, 58.4%, which is more or less the same as we see in Paul's Asia. So at least yeah, yeah, point. just a little higher maybe with us, but you know, still within the margin of error. Exactly, more or less. So you can so you can corroborate, as you say, you can compare, okay. and then you can see that um we, we can invalid we can validate uh, their list, they can validate ours. And uh, the only I think the only difference is the placement of uh, Duterte in their list, it's a little higher. Uh, but in ours, uh, this is how it came out. It's yeah, almost the same, statistically the same. The only big story is Erwin Tulfo lost 18 points, but his brother is in the top three, you know? so uh, that split the vote. Um, uh, uh, Senator Marcos has a 13-point decline, but she's still within the top 12, uh, from 42 uh, to 29%. Yeah, uh, And then, of course, uh, we have, I think, still significant Bastet Duterte getting 16%, okay, and Pulong, okay. So uh, when we go down the list, yeah, for the traditional opposition, uh, the, the liberals, I think the highest ranking. Uh, Pangilinan. Uh, no, yeah. no, but it's it's really Pangilinan, Trilon, the, the regular names are still there, yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, Lenny Robred is 11.7%. She went down uh, in this particular right. survey. Yeah. It's but... Yeah, this is uh, I think the um high uh, you know in, in terms of the um percentage, Kiko Palila still has a very good chance. Uh uh, uh former Senator Delor has an excellent chance. So the, you know, this is this these are just snapshots of a particular period. Uh, th these numbers will change obviously as we come closer to the uh, to October, no, and when we start campaigning. But these are the dominant names in the list. Uh, Secretary Ralph Rector is not doing so bad at 13.9. Uh, Abigail Binay uh, is at 14.1. It's still, these are good numbers no, for uh, uh, people thinking of running for the Senate in the double digits. So this like is a the place to work on, no? a foundation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. but the I think the the big story is, I think, Bamakino in our survey, 7.3%. Yeah, uh, yeah the difference between us and uh, mm. and Pulse, no? uh, So yeah. then we go as we go down this uh, um, the highest rate, rate rated no uh, possible candidate uh, for the left is Neri Colmenares at five point four percent, which is not a surprise. No, I think this is it's not a surprise, and it's stable there at that number. It's still a good uh, base to start with. So there's there's uh, some uh, traction as far as uh, this kind. Uh, this candidate's name is concerned, uh, Congressman Neri Colmenares of uh, the progressives on the left, no? So this. But wala ka yung ano yung uh, awareness level. Um. Ah yeah yeah we, we actually have but just yeah, for the. Yeah, I, I mean in the in the yeah in the in the in the. But the table we didn't know it was a packed table of almost mm, six. So we had space. Uh, yeah, but we yeah. we we gave the awareness uh, numbers for our clients obviously. Uh, right, right. The top ten have a high awareness already. Almost hundred percent. Top twelve. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, almost hundred percent. Yeah. So uh, except for uh, Ben Her Abalos, yeah. so little than the, that. No, something like uh, about ninety percent, ninety ninety two percent. Yeah, but uh, the, the the relatively um, high awareness for most of these uh, top ranking uh, senatorial balls uh, in the top twelve. Yeah, I, but th this looks like a very packed survey, no? Because if, even if you yeah. go to the lower half, lo there are people who are senators there for multiple times. Forget about people who are known, no? So yeah. I, I, I don't know. I mean, of course, uh, longitudinally, we can refer to other surveys here. But I mean, from both of us, I think our understanding is that this is probably the most competitive Senate race, no? If all yes. of the people we think are going to run are going to run, right? I mean, this is crazy. Yeah. It's so tight. Yeah, it, it's it, it's very tight, and we yeah. feel that least four slots are the only ones being uh, relatively open. No? And you'll notice uh, when you look at as you go down the list that the gaps between candidates are are, are much 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 smaller. No? from uh, from uh, ten to fifteen. No, so uh, from rank ten to fifteen, or yeah, it, it's very competitive. Yeah. And I think the magic number for for uh, for us is something uh, above thirty percent. No, anybody above thirty percent has a very good chance of getting in the top twelve. 
So yeah, that, that, that looks like the threshold. Huh? Rate, yeah. Yeah, you, yeah. You, that looks like it. But twenty percent puts you within the competitive range, and thirty percent more or less puts you almost in a shoe in range, right? Yeah, assured of a spot. You see, the the, the vulnerables are those uh, ranked eight and below. So yeah, it's be very competitive. Which includes Imi Marcos, no? Which is um, yeah, for the first time. For the first quite time. a quite a shock, no? It's a shocker yeah. considering. You know, Actually, it's a shocker for us because uh, you know she's had a she's not a client, by the way. Uh, yeah. She we we we've been measuring her numbers really as a proxy also for the administration, no? Um, and it's it's gone down, and her numbers have gone down. Um and, and to, to, to some extent, although we haven't reported uh, the numbers for the administration yet, we're still going over them a uh, second time. Uh, they, there's a slight decline uh, on 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 major but I issues. I mean, opposition in a way, right? She yeah, like... I know. Maybe maybe that's part of the problem also. Nobody knows where she <laughs> actually. More opposition. I mean, yeah. let's be honest about it. Yeah. Yeah. She's uh maybe that 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 erosion, no, that noise and uh, yeah. the confusion on uh, which side she is. Uh, supposed I, to be I find it also interesting, um, uh, Professor Rai, the the fact that Isco and Willie Ong are almost the same. No, I mean it's very yeah, yeah, close. yeah. Considering how far they were back in the day, one was presidential, ball, now competitive at some point. One was like a vice presidential that people were not sure about. And mohong, eto bakamak third time locking na si Willie Ong, no, just like reason. Yeah, it's, it's, that's, that's very possible, Richard. That's very. Eto my chance na siya mag third time locking, no. Because for the last three quarters, he's been in the top twelve. Yeah, pass Actually, uh, very few occasions uh, in the uh, in the last few quarters that these numbers have really fluctuated. Uh, you know, it's statistically stable, except that in this particular quarter, uh, for the last two quarters, it's been statistically stable. But the, the, this third quarter, he uh, went down slightly because you know you you, you put in two two big names, eh? uh, President Duterte and. Uh, a former president of the end, of course, Ben for disrupted the list. So they, they ate into a lot of the uh, support for the others. No? So that's one big takeaway that once you uh, introduce uh, BNB, right? Ben and uh, Baste, right? Ben and Baste, it, it kind yeah. of scrambled the whole rankings and all of that, which tells you how volatile no, the situation is, including the top guy coming down to 58%. Uh, from 18 points uh, down, 18 points down, yeah, yeah, from 70 plus percent. I mean, that's crazy, mid 70s, uh, percent. Yeah. Um, so, so okay, so, um, uh, so one implication is if you're Erwin Tulfo, the biggest threat to you topping the Senate race, because <laughs> it matters to be, is your own brother, right? Yeah, yeah, and, um, it, it, um, it ay napaisip bigla na wait lang baka okay lang ko rin tumakbo dyan kasi Montulfo wasn't do, doing too bad in 2019 uh, service if I'm not mistaken and he's the he's the OG right so a Montulfo yeah. run would be quite bad for Erwin right it could really speed yeah. both in ways that happen so the, the explosive part of this is, is TNT Tulfo and Tulfo you know uh, so the, but they're on the opposite sides so politically you have to understand uh Oh, yeah, to, definitely. Or leaning uh, uh, towards uh, the Duterte side, and uh, uh, Irwin is 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 very much no with the administration, which and is so, like the Marcoses, right? One one yeah. admin, one is the the other side. But yeah. man, but okay, I don't. Of course, I'm not sure if this was in the survey, but is there an um when people sh uh, um the express their preference, meron bang appreciation ng mga ganyan nuances, or it's more really the brand, the name, the 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 name recall. <laughs> I will, we, we don't have the data yet for that. Uh, well, hopefully yeah. we're going to build the probe on that. Uh, again, we, we, we link preference with culture. No? Of course, it's a big debate in politics. No? Um, but, you know, th this is where we're coming from, at, from Okta. And that these preferences are built on identities, no? on cleavages, on perceptions about uh, our political culture. No? And, and, and you'll see that in the next uh, set of uh, survey data that we'll go, we're going to show you. Uh, but but yes, brand is important, and you're seeing it. No, the tool for brand is alive and kicking, and and still very competitive. You're also seeing it with the Duterte brand. All three yeah. uh, possible candidates, I'm sure. Uh, you know, we're not sure if any of them are actually going to run, are in uh, the top fifteen. So you know, uh, th this is uh, brand brand name. You know, uh, is important and. 
in this particular midterm elections, if these if this might look like the cast, no, it's going to be highly competitive because you have, you're you're pitting, you know, very established brands against each other, and then again, you you know, machinery will come in, uh, your network, political network will come in, of course, resources will come in, and 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 so you know, uh, you know, to uh, go to the next part of our survey, you, you will notice that you know it's also important if you're aligned with the administration at this yeah, particular. Yeah, I think that's a perfect segue. But before we segue to the next part, because that's where we can break down the alignments and affiliations yeah. and preferences, which is I think kudos to Okta for doing that because I think that's the kind of service we want to also see more more data on that because we generally talking we talk about DDS versus loyalist in a blogger sense of the word, but we really need the data. But but. Uh, for a moment, can we? I understand that you know we want to talk about things based on as much possible as data we can get. But let's just say, despite the epistemological limitations, if I can put it, what is your sense with the rise and rise of Tulfos? Because our understanding is that, well, I mean, Rafi Tulfo is also now the front runner um, to be the next president of the Philippines. Although, of course, in the Pulse Asia survey, at least from what we see, it's statistically tied. But his trajectory is just incredible from teens to 30 plus percent right now. And who knows, right? If Lenny doesn't run or someone else, probably the numbers will go more to Tulfa than Sarah, considering the opposition between Sarah and 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 uh, and, and Lenny Robredo, right? So um so this is really the uh, I mean, you're absolutely right. We we can talk about the Duterte shortly, but the 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 thing with the Tulfos is ang basa ko dito is the surprise to me is how Duterte made it to national politics ahead of Tulfos. Because if we recall it five, ten years ago, the Tulfos were already a national brand. It was just a matter of yeah. them making that leap. Diba? They were already household names and they already had that huge appeal to the masses as a kind of a savior of the people. Talagang tap na tap nila yan. So in a way, you could say this is a belated right, harvest of that long-term building of their brand and, and the appeal that they enjoy among them. I mean, and just that, diba? macho, savior, I won't say vigilante justice, but, you know, let's just call it Tulfo justice. I interviewed Rafi Tulfo, so people can check the interview that I had with Rafi Tulfo on yeah. these issues. Um, But, uh, so, you know, Basako, I want to understand where you come from as a political scientist. Again, I understand because you're now in the survey agencies, you want to be a little bit uh, uh, circumspect about uh, any kind of yeah. statistical analysis, but just overall, um, it's, it's a, okay. I, I agree with the the common perceptions about uh, the tool for brand. No, it, it's it's it, you know, it's it's been evolving over time. Uh, the decision to run was uh, only recent, and the decision to run was, by the way, linked also to the support of the Duterte family. You know, uh, to a great extent, they were associated very strongly with uh, the Duterte brand also, and uh, they share many commonalities. No, as far as the uh, those brand that brand of leadership and governance is concerned. Um, yeah, yeah they they come from the populist mode, no, and uh, the this you know in in, a, in an era where or in a context where we have weak institutions, okay, a, a state that's characterized as weak on many fronts, uh, you find space for these kinds of candidates and the kinds of advocacies. And the leadership style that they promote, um, th th these tend to rise, no? especially during hard times. Uh, Richard, you see a lot of populists uh, rising up, no. And 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 this particular context that we're in as a country is extremely hard for most of our countrymen. Mahirap na hirapan mo yung ating kababayan. Naikita rin namin sa surveys namin yan consistently over the last year, no. Ang talagang problema, number one urgent national concern that people want to resolve, that what people want government to resolve has always been the high prices of goods and services. Their, their, uh, second is, of course, uh, accessible food and, of course, higher wages. So, yan, consistent yan. Now, in, in times of hardship, you know, uh, populists uh, find space. No? And I guess this is the kind of... Uh, uh, population that's very... Uh, I think the term we use... Uh, uh, Filipinos now, yeah. Right, the term we use is... Uh... Um, was that a weak state, strong tool force, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, but, no. the, but yeah, that's a, that's a problem, you know. That's a that's a struggle. You know? We um, <laughs> you use the weak state, strong society uh, perspective, yeah. but that's that's one way of looking at. But the populist 
appeal is very strong with Filipinos. You have to also understand the Tufos have a particular ethnic uh, background. They're, they're Bisaya. They have a strong support as far as that's concerned. When you look at their, their father is Ilocano. Last time I checked. Yes, I know. I know. Yes. They, they know. From Batak to so, yata eh. And then Jap yeah, okay. Japanese yung mom nila. Yeah. Yeah, and then they you know they they're also popular in the, the you know, they're a strong candidate in 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 this particular sense. Right. You get votes everywhere. When you look at the Duterte, let's say, assuming there's a Sara, Rafi, you know, uh, competition in 2020, which is so far away, no, uh, Rafi will will have uh, will be very competitive because he he gets votes everywhere. North, South, Visaya. We, we have a probe. We just have to ask our, um, uh, you know, our uh, the, the company that commissioned it, uh, if we can release uh, the probe on uh, Tulfo versus Sara. But in our probe, uh, Tulfo has not lost to Sara Duterte one-on-one. In fact, the gap is increasing. Thank, thank you see, for the reality it. Is, the reality is, the reality is, <laughs> We won't give the numbers yet because yeah, we have to. Yeah, exactly. No, no, I appreciate, I appreciate that. Basic, right. uh, yeah, the 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 basic the basic uh, perspective is um in in Philippine elections it's not just a two way contest, na man eh. You oh, haven't so. seen a two way cost contest, okay? Uh, in post March or the Philippines, except no, no, except for the contest between Cory Aquino and um, President Marcos Senior. But after that, it's always been uh, you know tandems, no. Multiple tandems competing against each other, and that's where uh, Rafi Tulfo's weakness is. Okay, he has no baluarte. The right. Tetes have consistent baluarte. Even now, despite all the attacks against them, they have a baluarte. Yes, you can say it's only located in one regional. Yeah. yeah, I mean the now, but you know it, you still have that. So in a three-way, four-way contest, Sara the Tete will always be competitive. You understand? So this that's, is the that's situation. a very good point. Numbers, yeah, yeah, can I have of, of course I understand that <laughs> you know um I thank you so much by the way for at least confirming because uh, you know I've been saying for a while that not only in Pulse Asia but we've seen different surveys this uh, upward trajectory of uh, Rafi Tulfo obviously yeah. that's where the second preference comes in because it's very possible that a lot of those candidates there particularly Lenny I doubt if she'll run mm. in 2028 but of course things could change if she does well let's say as a local official in 2025 onwards uh, so that that's where things could get very interesting, right? Um, but obviously you're right. Um, the other important factor are Duterte's and three Duterte's um could potentially make it. I mean, that's next level, right? We have already <laughs> Magdid, Magina, right? The Villiers, <laughs> the Titanos, but um three brothers and three Duterte's would be something, right? Yeah, this is uh this is a veto constituency already, you know. Uh yeah, parang ano na partido na sila, no? Um yeah, but uh We'll see what if it will actually happen. You know, uh, this, things could change uh, between now and October, and so para sa ating mga kababayan, nagbabago pa yung mga numero nato, at meron pang espasya para sa mga progresibo, meron pang espasya talaga para sa ating mga sa opposition, uh, and of course, you know, wala pa namang kampanya, although nakakampanya na informally <laughs> ang lahat, uh, mukang pamilya ang uh, malaking factor dito na pangalan pamilya pera ang magiging malaking factor dito sa ating uh, 2025 elections going to be expensive very competitive and parang may alas yung ating uh, administration okay kasi marami silang resources sila nakapuesto naka ngayon so those associated with the uh, administration when you look down the list yeah but the thing is that's the that's the big question that's the other big question Richard somebody dyan yung administration <laughs> Hindi ba sino ba siya kandidato ng administration? Hindi ba? Uh, exactly. Wala, parang wala kandidato yung administration sa Prime Abalos? I, mean, I could only think about Abalos as a solid kind of that. Yeah, Abalos. Yeah, that's possible. But you know, he's at the, you know, he's at the end of the list. no When you look at the yeah, top, yeah, medyo, then, uh, line, yeah. Unless Erwin well, decides yeah. with the admin, unless Erwin explicitly um, come. I mean, you could have a situation of Ben being in the campaign of Duterte camp, and then yeah, Erwin uh, on the <laughs> other side. That would be an interesting opposition, also in that sense, now between two brothers. Yeah, were, yeah but oh. right now they're not going to be. There's no um Estrada Ejercito sort of uh, situation like we had in 2019. Both of them lost. I think that's no? 2019, you know, when uh, yes, then oh, yeah. uh, number 14, C J V Atanon, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, 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 14. 14. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so during the top five. Eh, 
which is kind of, you know, they eat into each other, splitting the vote, but they're very competitive. They're, and with those numbers, you're almost assured. They're assured now winning uh, with those numbers. It's a matter of whether you top the race, because that's the other yeah. If you top the Senate race, it puts you in a position for the bigger conversation. And if there's going to be so many tulfos, it's going to be a question of who's the... Who's you know, the, if you're a tool for right now, you're already part of the conversation exactly. where you have 2028. It doesn't matter if you're going to top it or not. Uh, but it looks like the, the way things are, they top, they're, they're going to top, no? Um, yeah, 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 but but yeah. you have to also look at Tito Soto. Uh, his numbers have actually improved. Uh, surprising. Uh, but Bongo is stable. You know, hardly changed. Statistically stable. Yeah. So, nag so crystallizing base, nila, oh, crystallizing base nila, no? Yeah, yeah. Bongo has a, you know, these are the things we have to also look at, no? How Bongo has evolved into his an independent candidate, no? A mm. candidate that has own base. Uh, not a proxy the, only for Digong. Yes, not a proxy anymore. And he's much higher than his own mentor, yeah. his boss. Yeah, you know, uh, this, this is uh, these are significant numbers. One could also argue that the president's numbers have declined over time. You know, uh, yeah. it's number, but you can't say that they don't have support. All three sons are in the within the top fifteen, higher than even the established, the real people who are real candidates who want to run. Mm. Uh, don't really think that Baste and uh, Pulong are going to run for the Senate. So when you take out all these, so. It's a dynamic playing list. Na to, no? We don't even know if uh, President Duterte is going to run for the Senate. But if you take him out, you know, a lot of people will go up. No? You know, I mean, probably if Digon doesn't run, then you're going to see a bump in the numbers of the Sun, particularly if this is going to be Bastet. Obviously, people are watching that because if Bastet doesn't become the mayor next, I know, then people are even wondering if Sara will slide down, which would be unprecedented and crazy. But again, this is Philippine politics. Anything can happen. Yeah. But I don't want to push you too much because we're trying to keep this as data-driven as possible. Can we now transition to the second part of this in terms of alignments and affiliations? Because I think, Jan Solid, you're making a very important contribution. So kudos to Octa for that. Okay, so this is, can, can you see this? Yeah, is this, can this be seen? Again, I'm seeing the first page, which says the survey 20. 14 results. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'll just. Uh, He's very really shy. I don't know why. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Na. When you. Baka ulitin na lang, uh, Prof. Okay. Now we can see this. Uh, can, can you see? slide it down to just see if there's a movement? Yeah. Mm. Is it moving down? Hindi pa rin. I don't know why. But kanina na ayos natin na. Okay. Sinasabot natin. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, let me try oh, one. Hindi natutuwa sa mga surveys niyo, ah. Oh yeah, it's possible, you know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm gonna share anyway. Um, the links and all, just in case people. Are yeah. Ready. Okay. What What about this? Like, can Can this uh, be seen? Can you move it again? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Can that be seen? Yeah. I mean, we only see a frozen. I know. Eh, first page. I don't know why. So, but kanina na ayos natin eh. Oh, I know. Just minute. Let me just check. Let's see. Ah, oh, what's What's going on here? Never gonna hit in the name. Yeah, okay, yeah. Is that better? Uh, yeah, okay. let me see lang ano. Let me see. Uh, okay. No problem, prof. Sige lang, okay. take your time. Um we want to yeah. make sure. Okay, so while we're talking, can participants can now see your application? Is that good? Yeah, frozen I don't know why. Um yeah, is that but is that going down? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But anyway, um, Sigur, what we can do is we can just discuss it and you just cite the numbers. If ever, I can just share in the long screenshots and all later on. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, we'll know. We'll, uh, we'll, uh, while we're talking about it, no? Uh, so our, our basic question was, which of the following best describes your political preference? No? And, uh, you know, um, we... We... we uh, looked at the survey results now and the survey results are this now um i'm trying to see if we can still share uh rich richard now um uh, you want i'll re lang, re appoint you na lang as a co yeah 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 or and and while you're doing that maybe you can look at your side uh i sent the file to you anyway oh, baka so ako na lang. oh yeah try sure. try mo double click so while we're talking about it so so we okay. look so First, Major Siguro, um, Prof, can you give us a background? Why are we doing these surveys? Why is this survey important? Ganun na lang, Siguro, hey, the basic yeah. questions. Why, why this survey? Because I didn't see that with other survey agencies. Uh, this is quite unique. Yeah, actually, this was, uh, this was uh, client-driven, to be brutally honest, although it was uh, it was not commissioned. No, 
uh, a client was wondering if when we had the free question, we had a free space in our survey. So uh, he wanted to ask, you know, if if is is there a way to find out partisanship, no? As far as uh, the political context is concerned, and uh, you know the the implication amongst associates, there are we divide along parties, ideology, uh, but we're not, no. So we constructed this as an, a, a, you know, a preliminary uh, question that we want to test a probe, no. But the client was a a big part of constructing the question. And uh, the, the object is, of course, to look at political preference in general and to look at how we are, um, you know, who everyday Filipinos support at this particular time. And so we were happy to get to generate some information. Uh, it was also an attempt to test the validity of the question. We, we could change the question over time. Um, and so this is the object of our uh, probe. So uh, I hope that, uh, yeah, is that better? Yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah. You can just go down. Yeah, let's go down. Yes, one more, one more. Yeah, that's it. No, no, you, you, you missed it now, Richard. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, that's it. No, no, can you go up? Yeah, that's it, that's it. No, can you go up? Can you go up? A little more, One page one, Richard. Uh, second, yeah, second page, I'm sorry, second page. Yep. Okay, that's it. Stop there. Make it bigger. Yeah, that should be good. Interesting uh, findings. Yeah. So the basic question is, uh, are you pro Marcos? No? So the uh, the statement which best describes you is is the the way we we uh, we ask the question. And I support President Marcos and his administration. Thirty one percent. I support the the Duterte family and their political alliance. We we classify them as pro Duterte. That's twenty percent. I support the opposition. We we didn't give, we didn't define the opposition to our uh, interviewees as just the Liberal Party. We just said that you know this may include the left and the the the, the Liberal Party or the traditional uh, opposition, but that generated a support of four percent. So, but then this is quite surprising. No, uh, twenty nine percent. We call them independents in the study. I do not support the Marcos administration. The Duterte family and the opposition, 29%. And those ambivalent, 15, meaning they refused. So, a lot of anti system, if I can put it that way. <laughs> yeah, right? that's, uh, um, they, they they oh, oh. No, but this is a space where the opposition can build on. Yeah, this is a space also that will be up for grabs if you're part of the Duterte alliance building a, the new opposition in their view. And of course, the Marcos administration was trying to solidify their base, no? So twenty nine percent. So where is uh, where, where where do we locate the Marcoses, no? the pro Marcos support, no? It's largely in the national capital region, no? Uh, and Visayas, okay? Uh, they're they're not very strong at this particular time in Mindanao. Seventeen percent lang sa kanila, and uh, their their base of support is DNE, okay? So when you go to the Duterte family. The support, uh, 20% of adult Filipinos um, support the Duterte family. Uh, their, ba their base is really made now, 53. You can see naman. Oh. So, talagang may, ano sila, may hold sila sa lugar na yan. Right. And, and probably uh, the, the, the low numbers in Mindanao is because of the feud, right? I mean, yes, after of course. The coming out, I mean, we can see that in, in for instance, the uh, other side survey on the presidential balls. Ang baba yeah. lahat dun sa Mindanao. And then dun sa preference also for the president, laki ng baksak ni Marcos sa Mindanao. You're so, correct. You're correct, Richard. Ano, kasi um, yung ibang probes natin on trust and approval, bumag bumagsak talaga yung support sa Mindanao kaala kay President Marcos. So it's consistent, no? And and when you look at the the base of support, it's really class E. Okay, so for the twenty nine percent, which is significant, I see a class E, no? Both of them are thirty percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So ma ma yung massa appeal nila is almost identical, yeah. Yeah, pero mas malaki si Impro Marcos group sa class D, right. which is the big chunk the, the of the biggest our, one, which is fifty five percent voting population. Yeah, yeah. So, oh, even of the population in general, adult Filipino population. So, yeah. So, those who do not support is still a huge chunk. No? And uh, those who refuse to um, 
you know, who are ambivalent, basically. So the twenty nine percent we classify them as independents, yeah. And 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 you'll know you'll notice the base of so. Can you go down to the last three slides? Uh, yeah, it's, it's just at the bottom. Yeah. So yeah, let, let we can if can you yes, put uh yeah, yeah. Oh, ikaw pala sa Zoom, Richard. Eh. Pwede ka pala. Partner pala tayo. Pwede tayo partner sa presentation. <laughs> Sige, sir. Ako yung asik research assistant. <laughs> But look at these numbers. Okay, but uh, this, I, I, is this useful? You look at the male, yes, the demographic supporting. Uh, yeah. Good. Yeah. So uh, at the, the this is how it's spread. At, uh, you know, the regional we know that already. But urban rural, it's almost the same. Yeah, for the Marcos vote. Yeah, the pro Marcos uh, support, not vote, but support. I'm sorry. Uh, male, female, almost the same. Uh, but look at the age group. Uh, um, they're they're pretty balanced. They're very strongly, well supported in the critical uh, eighteen to uh, uh, thirty-five range. So that's where uh, there's lots of support. And you'll be surprised, no? Fifty-five to sixty-four. Ito yung Marcos, ano, babies, no? Ito yung uh, ni pa naman ako dito sa age group nito. Pero alam mo yon, ah, uh, yeah. The Marcos. Uh, <laughs> oh, 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 so, ito, ito, but, but I think interesting yung sa education, uh, actually educational background ng ng uh, Marcos supporter, no? So uh, you'll see that a big chunk of them are from high school vocational, yeah. Uh, and interesting, but not surprising. Iglesia ng Cristo is a big, you know, when you look at the religious breakdown, fifty-five uh, percent of the and the, and that and then of course you're you're you know you you look at the ethnic support no uh, it's it's basically ilocano tagalog no yes okay. uh, but there's a very small there's a very strong cebuano support pa rin 22% pero wait lang Ag aglipayan wasn't it found by an ilocano <laughs> I was just reading lang about Isabella de los Reyes and then Aglipayan. But, yeah, but, 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 but the big yeah. chunks there are Roman Catholic, Islam, yeah. and so meaning in the terms of the actual percentage that they have as far as the population is concerned. So, Very interesting. But, Good. interesting no? but you look at the, the next slide, which is the Duterte family. Yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it, 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 it You'll you'll notice their the support is very different at, as far as the age groups are concerned. Um, yeah, the, the the big supporters are Islam. No, can you see sixty six percent? So uh, when you look at the religious support, no? the Mindanao factor there because most yeah, of the Mindanao the factor. Are in Mindanao. Exactly. Yeah, so Mindanao is also their base of support, and. Uh, Bisaya, no, forty-one percent. Can you see? What's 1 the number? One percent, Ilocano. One percent. Which I wonder, sino tong one percent ng Ilocano to? to? Oh, I'm gonna research <laughs> them. Pagod kay sa akin. Uwi ako na lagi soon. Hey guys, <laughs> 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 may one percent. One percent. Wow. Yeah. But anyway, uh, but this is a, a snapshot. Uh, this is good. This is a very, uh, very helpful. Uh, uh, you know, it, 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 it reinforces the demographics we know about these two political families and why they were also very uh, unbeatable together. Okay. Um, meaning, you know, you, you can understand their base of support. Right. If they're united, they can really, uh, there will be a lot of continuity as far as government and politics is concerned. No? Interesting. But then they're, bi they're bi bifurcated, not just around personalities and personal interests but also along policy lines we also know that diba? right uh, and it's 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 become the great divide uh between the families no? they one is very supportive of china the other one is uh, not so not as supportive no uh, sorry uh, is that yours or mine no, no uh i think that that probably is yours uh bro well, okay, uh, no no this is very important because Honestly, for me, the big thing before we talk about the third part, independence, is and the reason why I find it very interesting, uh, aside from the fact that there are sub demographics, this this reminds of uh, us of the. Because uh, if you look at almost all of the voters are either undecided, independent, or major traditional opposition, right? 
Because yeah. pag sinama mo yung dalawa, 31 plus 20, that's just 51%. So, roughly half of the voters are up for grabs, right? In a sense, for an yeah, in a sense, to, yeah. to Duterte and Marcos. This is this yeah. is huge. This is actually very important if you look at it that way. Assuming yeah. if someone consolidates them into some a third force. A third force. If you're planning a campaign for uh, the midterms, this is uh, important to take note of. But this is not surprising. They're they're not very strong. The administration is not very strong uh, in Mindanao. Uh, so, but 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 the thing is, they can consolidate. When when you look at the independents, there uh, a lot of them are, in, are still in balance. Luzon, Visayas. So you can uh, you, that, that's up for grabs, talaga. Lana Visayas. So uh, this is uh, something that the administration and even the opposition, whoever eventually becomes, no, uh, or takes takes control of it. However, it, uh, it evolves, no. Uh, we'll have to work on. There's a lot uh, uh, for grabs. Now, if you put that plus those who did not respond, that's around forty-five percent, Richard. So up for grabs. No, I, I I find this very very helpful. Thank you so much. Uh, 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 I'll just call you Ranjit, na lang, kasi ano. We want to have you more regular, at least on first name basis, na lang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Professor yeah. Right. Um, no, no. Um, this is very very helpful. Obviously. I found nothing shocking in terms of numbers except the one person. Bakit may one percent pang mga ilo? <laughs> pang hudas kaya? I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. Um, yeah. No, because yeah. I was just in Baguio, de ba? Last week before I flew into US, and and okay. and dami mga bumpers. Where you now? Bro? Where are you now? It's fed. I'm Wait, in, what? What? Uh, Berkeley now. Berkeley. Okay, 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 good. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's, no, time zone not not it's night time or late, it's, late? it's 9 p.m. right now. Yeah, exactly. Oh, okay, that's nice. That's nice. So, thank you so much day. for agreeing to morning because I'm here up. Because later uh, we're gonna have uh, Senator Trillanes back again, also on our show. But hmm. so that's gonna be like five a.m. my time. So major, you're gonna see more sabog version of me. Um, <laughs> five a.m. is not my time, talaga. But uh, <laughs> thank you so much for this. Um, so Professor, can you can we look at the big picture now? And also, dito sa independence. What is your read dito sa independence? Because I also find this very interesting. Well, there there are um yeah Filipinos who are still uh. You know, uh, they may have actually uh, um, support. No? I mean, the, the 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 question is not crafted. You know, they're, they're, it still needs uh, a lot of improvement as far uh, as uh, generic question. What about the uh, right? right? What about and so right, right. Uh, to, uh, yeah, improve this question uh, over time? This is a, I remember this was not de developed by Octave, so the client base. No, the client suggested this question, and uh, we just ran it. Uh, uh, for them, no. Operationalized um, lang kayo. Oh, uh, no, operation, but with slight uh, improvements in the, uh, to improve the validity of the question. But right. then again, we 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 can break this down ideologically. We try to find out. No? A lot of people are out there who don't see the administration or the threat as uh, as groups that they want to support. Okay, and, and that's also good, right? Diba? Uh, that the company that the, the, it's not bifurcated by just two families, although a big chunk of it is nearly 50%. No, I oh, know the more than 50% are already basically either pro Marcos or pro Duterte, but a big chunk is still open and 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 uh, is still looking for that uh, group they want to support or they have support. No, um, but we also included the opposition because that's four percent, lang. No, and so they don't see right. the liberal party, uh, traditional or the opposition. Party. As the, as the group they want to support, also that's that's also good that we, you know, our, our own. Uh, but, but one could also argue there's a divide, right? There's a divide between those who have already affiliations, no, and those who who do not. Um, what it what's relevant for me here is that it reaffirms all these old images of Philippine government and politics, right? That's familial. It's very personal. That uh, our divides are along ethnic cleavages, no. And that uh, you know the weakness of the party system, the lack of it, no, the non-existence of it, has not disciplined our politics. Uh, has made our politics ill-disciplined and around all this uh, parochialism and personalism. Yeah, but if the if we had stronger parties, you know, we could uh, uh, see ourselves be divided along ideas, ideology, platforms, and programs. No? Instead of just families, no? but I think a lot of the data reaffirms all our own, uh, you know, consistent uh, images no, of uh, how changeless right. Philippine politics seems to be. But you know, there's hope in the 29 and in the 40 percent who don't have 
opposition. Yeah, that's yeah. a huge number. I, I, honestly, I think I'm more optimistic than you. Cautiously more yeah. optimistic in a sense yeah. that the two surveys that we discussed today uh, are two sides of the picture, right? One side is the continuity part, particularly continuity in terms of appeal of the tool force and Duterte's and the whole macho populist kind of appeal. Although yeah. I think both of us argued that forget about differences between Duterte's and Tulfo's. The Tulfo brothers themselves are extremely different from each other, right? I have interviewed yeah, yeah. In, in Rafi, two very different yeah. individuals. Um, I think Rafi is much more independent so far. Uh, let's see with Erwin if he's going to hew more towards the administration. And then Ben Tulfo is totally <laughs> different conversation, right? But at the same time, I think the second survey was very interesting because almost half of the voters uh, were either independents or kind of anti-system or something, which tells you you know, that there's hope study, for change. Huh? Exactly. Assuming yeah, so certain right. things are done. Yeah, yeah. So at one level, one could construe uh, continuity and change no, from the picture being shown yeah. by the survey. Although the data is not enough uh, to make uh, solid arguments. But, you know, there's always that as uh, taking ourselves out of the survey and looking at the general trajectory of Philippine politics. There's a, there is a trajectory for reform. Uh, there's a strong uh, sense of continuity as far as government and party is concerned, but there is always that, uh, you know, that element of change that's happening and being driven by young people, by people who are progressive, who align themselves along ideas, uh, platform, and 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 you know, uh, a belief that you know democracy and development can actually happen uh, if we all work together. So you know, there, there's always that uh, that movement there. And, uh, you know, hopefully that movement will, will have more voice and become more, um, uh, you know, vibrant. No? And uh, we hope to see that, uh, you know, uh, more survey numbers in the future pointing out to this progressive movement taking hold of our politics. Uh, on that note, thank you very much, uh, Professor Rai. As you can see, low but now dito medyo mag in preparation of, uh, for the Senator Trillanes interview. Yeah, I know, I know. There's there's so much going on. I still have to write a piece on the quad patrols in West Philippine Sea and all. So thank you so much, for, uh, Professor Wright. This was very helpful data. And definitely I'm going to refer this uh, to this uh, in future lectures, discussions, and writings. We hope to have you again uh, in, in, in the near future as more data, as more interesting surveys, as more tightened, you know, designed surveys come in because... Yeah. Para mas kampante, kasi I can see you're hedging a little bit uh, in, yeah. a, in a social scientist way. Na para yes, want to exactly. jump into conclusions. But yeah. as I said, at least we have something to hold on to before we can make a conjectural or more than hopefully conjectural political analysis. Thank you very much, Professor Ranjit Wright from Okta Research and, of course, University of the Philippines, Diliman, Political Science Department for joining us. Thank you, Richard. Uh, and thank you to all those who watched uh, today's podcast. Thank you. God bless and have a good day, Poser. Thank you. Okay.